So we're sitting here in the brewery tap filming part one of our Tullamore Dew pub series to show the charm and the sort of beauty, the character that sits in, in these incredible pubs. Paul, I'm with you today, the owner of the brewery tap. How long have you owned this bar? Myself and my wife, Cathy Ann, bought this pub 19 years ago, 2002. It was a big, a big uh, stepping stone in our life. I was originally the, previously the bar manager in the Bridge House Hotel next door to us here, so I, I moved along from there. And I bought a guy called Kevin Carr, who was the previous bar manager in the Ridge House. So we both followed the same paths in life. The pub is a very sort of sort of famous pub in Tullamore. It's the oldest licensed premises in Tullamore. Might not be the oldest pub, but it was actually a licensed tobacconist back in the 1800s. Uh, and it's always held the license all along. It's called the Brewery Tap, obviously, and there used to be a brewery at the back of it, uh, a working brewery. So Tullamore, as you know, obviously has a huge history of brewing and distilling and, and the brewery tap is a very big part of that. So Paul, you've had many great nights in here. What are sort of some of the most special occasions that you can remember of great nights here in the brewery tap? In 2007, Kerry were in Dublin in the Ireland semi-final. You could not move here, like it was actually sardines. My electrician had told me that our main fuse upstairs was obviously going to be under fierce pressure that whole weekend. And he left a spare beside the, the main one just in case it crashed. Five minutes to go, Kerry versus Dublin, draw match, the fuse goes, no power. So I run upstairs, burn my fingers taking out the fuse, put in the new fuse. With sky boxes, it takes them a couple of minutes to, to reboot. And it was like I lost 10 years of my life. The sweat was just pumping down. And I eventually got the sky boxes back on, television came back on. And thank God it was still a draw match with about two minutes to go. Actually, the next day was the vote in Scotland for the, the referendum for Scotland to stay. Oh, yeah, and we played the Flower of Scotland about 20 times around night, and the players went nuts. There, yeah. was, there was crowd surfing. The two four and a half litre bottles of Tullamore Jew kept emptying. You know, there were so many pubs as well. It was, you know, it was the whole town we getting a great buzz out of this. Your son is in a very popular band, Chasing Abbey. Didn't they have their first ever live gig here in the Brewery Tap? You know the lads very well, and, and you know, I suppose one thing we said, they're very grounded, you know, they're, they're still, if they ever thought anybody thought they were any sort of big head or whatever, but to be devastated themselves, they'd hate to have that because they're ordinary lads, they're, they're just three young guys that went to school together, got together and, and they're very talented musicians and they're, they're being very successful to date. All people in Tullamore are behind them and, and, and supporting them and if they're successful it's good for Tullamore as well and good for the Midlands, you know. Tell us about the fans you have in the pub because I often bring guests in here and they do look at me and say it's December, it's five degrees Celsius and we're in a pub with fans all over the place that I've never seen on and I've been in here a few nights Paul. What's the story behind the fans? The fans are here when I bought the pub and, and they're here from 1970 they were put up here and uh, they're, they're, they're just a sort of a feature. You see them in a lot, like obviously because of our climate, they're not going to, you know, and even if it is very warm here, all they're doing is blowing around warm air. You don't really get a whole lot. And when it is very warm, I, I, people come to me and say, well, have you ever turn on the fans? And I, I'd say, well, they're not going to make any difference. You know what I mean? But when they actually are on and the pub is full, it does create a lovely sort of an extra sort of a bit of a buzz about the place. You, you know, you hear customers saying, you, know, you never see them on, but we, we do turn them on. From you're very famous here in the tap for the Tapple Jew, one of your most signature serves. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, where it came from and some of its popularity? A number of many, many years ago, not long after William Grants came to Tullamore, I was here with a couple of friends one night and we were just sort of, we wanted to sort of have a signature pour of something with Tullamore Jew. And a girl who was there said, why don't we just try maybe with cloudy apple juice? And we had cloudy apple juice here at the time. Mm -hmm. And we tried it and it was nice, but they just said there was just something missing. So somebody else said, Try to squeeze the lime juice in it. Yeah. So we got some lime juice, squeeze it in. And next thing, literally on the same night, this person said, Do you know what we call it? We call it the Tapple Jew. Yeah. Obviously, tap, apple, and Jew. And we suggested, so next thing I got a few signs up, Tapple Jew. We decided at the time, and it's something I can probably never change, and my daughters won't let me change anything. We, 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 we pitched it at a sort of five euro, and next thing all of a sudden, just grew and grew and grew. Even in Russia, they've started a campaign doing whiskey and apple juice, all from a night here in the brewery tap. They've fallen in love with the drink, and now it's being enjoyed in Moscow and Petersburg, all over Russia, which is incredible to see where that drink has started. The Brewery Tap is a pub I would call a five-star pub. It has that charm inherent in it, and what I love is when people come in the door, you come around the bar, you shake their hand, you ask their name, you sit down, you really get the conversation flowing, you're interested how long they're in Ireland for what they're doing, you let them in behind the bar, you let them pull a pint. This is your home, this is your pub, and you give them that intimacy uh, as soon as they walk in the door. And I think people love that. That's not something they're used to, that's not something they're familiar, but here in the tap, it's sort of an attribute of the pub to make everyone feel welcome, no matter where you come from. 
I, for one, cannot wait to be back in the brewery tap when things reopen. And, and when we come back, we'll be bigger and stronger. I think it'll be like the Roaring Twenties all over again when things are opened up again. People just, people just can't wait to get back at it again. So. Bigger and better than ever. So cheers to that. Cheers, Kevin.